So I managed to round up a handful of products for my best of 2014 beauty favorites video. So it was hard not to pick all time favorites for this video, but I really tried to stick within products that I not only discovered this year, but also just really fell in love with this year. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm just gonna go in a random order based on how I grab things. So this is a definite favorite of 2014. This is the Naked 2 Urban Decay Basics Palette. Um, these are the shades. I've done a couple tutorials using this palette. I think I did a just a plain old review on it as well. Um, I like it. I don't own the Naked Basics palette, the original, because I felt like the shades were a little bit too light. So what I like about this palette is it has a nice range of darker shades and also a couple light ones, but you can mix and match to really create a lot of options. As far as the Naked palettes go, I don't really use the Naked 2 palette, which is the one that's about twice as long um, anymore that I got last year, I believe, around my birthday, 2013, I was pregnant. Um, I'm, I was pregnant this year on my birthday as well. But anyway, I think something like this is a little bit more realistic for my type of makeup interests. So if you're not super creative with eyeshadow where you like to sort of do the same thing with just a little bit of variety, the Naked Basics palette, either the first one or the second one, I recommend the second one. It's a good range of shades without feeling like, okay, great, I don't touch seven of the other colors, but I love three of them. This just hones in on exactly what you're gonna use pretty much on a daily basis. A mascara discovery of this year, which is kind of later in the year, is Max Zoom Fast Black Lash. And it is a carbon black dense mascara. So I only use this for the final coat. Um, if I use it from the beginning, I find that it's a little bit too heavy on my lashes. But this is a great, super black, big impact mascara. Um, my only complaint is the packaging. It's got kind of a textured finish and it just looks, it looks so dirty even after being in my makeup bag for like a day. So I don't, that doesn't affect the product at all, but I just wish it was shiny and could look a little bit fresher for longer. But otherwise, this is a great, great mascara. I've got a handful of things here. The Tarte Best in Faux Lash Fibers were a discovery for me this year. Um, and they just changed the game of how my mascara looked because my lashes are pretty... Um, sparse and these just filled in the holes so I've heard from a lot of you that the fibers fall in your eyes and get itchy and um, I think I don't know if it's just a tart best in faux thing or if that's just a fiber mascara thing but there is an art to using them so I'm hoping to film a tutorial soon showing you how I do that but these are great for it's dry fibers so you have to use a quite wet mascara to make them adhere to your lashes it's not like a fibery filled mascara. So you couldn't just put these on your bare lashes, you need to use mascara with them. The Anastasia Brow Pencil in Taupe was a favorite for this year, without a doubt. I think the thing that I like the most about it is it's a nice neutral shade, and a lot of times with brow pencils or any brow product, I find for me they fall on the warm side, and my natural color, which is what you're looking at here, is very cool and um, would fall in the neutral category. Ashy is maybe a word that you've heard around salons. Um, so I like my eyebrows to not look too warm and discolored um, compared to my natural hair. And now that I'm not stinking blonde as I used to be, I really want my eyebrows to look like they match my uh, actual hair color. Anyway, this is the perfect shade for me. Um, Anastasia just makes great brow products. I think they're exclusively an eyebrow product line. I haven't used the gel or powder or anything like that. I believe my sister has, but I kind of keep it simple with pencils, and this has been a fantastic one. Makeup brush loves for the year are by Sonia Kashuk. I have the blush brush here and one of her sort of fluffy eyeshadow brushes. I have a couple others, but I didn't find it necessary to grab all of them. These are the best makeup brushes. They're an awesome price point. You can find them at Target. She has this line, which would be the higher end line of the two that she makes, and then a cheaper line, which is white, I believe. I think I have like a concealer brush by her in the white line. Um, I notice a difference in quality when you bump up to the black shaped brushes and just find them to be awesome. I never have an issue with hairs coming out of the brushes onto my face. They're soft, they pick up product well, 
And I love the price point. I've spent money on nicer brushes and I find myself always grabbing these. Um, and I always love looking at the brushes that she has even though I have like what I need and I don't need multiple of the same. I'm like, ooh, that one's so soft. Maybe I could use that for something, but I've, I've withheld up until this point. Without a doubt, my favorite blush of the year is Cargo Los Cabos, and it's depotted. In other words, I took it out of the tin it was in because it was so loud in my makeup bag, and I put it in a magnetic palette, and that ended up being an incredible chore. I was gonna do that with all my makeup, but there's no way. I'm taking the time to do that. Um, so anyway, it comes in a tin. You can, I think, only find this shade, Los Cabos, on Birchbox.com because I believe it was an exclusive for Birchbox or just a limited edition. Um, I don't know if I've played around with any other cargo products, but I bought this when I was in New York. Um, when was that? October? And love it. It is beautiful. I still love my Tarte Amazonian Clay blushes. All the shades, they're beautiful, they're beautiful, but this one is just so nice. I don't know. It's just a beautiful shade. There's not a shade in the Tarte Amazonian Clay blushes that is as similar to this. So, in fact, I like layering them because I have the Tarte blushes and then this Los Cabos by Cargo in the same magnetic palette. So I'll like kind of, you know, customize my blush shade in the morning. Um, but this is just a great base and I think could work on a lot of skin tones. Body cream favorite of the year. This was an end of the year thing, so I'm sure there was something I loved in the spring, but this is definitely worth mentioning. Um, the, what's the brand? Hello. Soap and Glory Smoothie Star Lightly Whipped Body Butter Cream and the fragrance I finally figured out is Pistachio Almond and Sweet Vanilla. And I mentioned this in my December favorites because it was new to me then. So, all right, I'm kind of sneaking it into the best of 2014, I guess. But um, I've used so stinking much of it and I love that it's in a tub. I think because I'm slathering so much lotion on my body right now because it's dry and um, I'm just trying to keep my skin hydrated to avoid any stretch marks. Um, and this isn't a stretch mark cream, just to clarify, it's just a regular body cream. Anyway, um, it smells so good and it just is a nice winter smell. Like I think I would want something fruitier in the summer, but uh, this has definitely been a favorite and worth looking into if you're looking for a new body cream, just because this smells so unique. I haven't smelled anything like it um, and it's not uh, abrasive like some floral fragrances can be. So that was a definite favorite for the year. And then my one hair product discovery that was memorable, I've tried a couple other hair products this year for sure, um, but the one that was most memorable is the Amica Undone Texture Spray. I love the Amica, um, what is the deep conditioning mask called? I can't remember, but it's the deep conditioning treatment for your hair. That's one of my favorite deep conditioners. I use that on the regular. You can find these products on birchbox.com. You can maybe find them elsewhere. I always just default to Birchbox, but you can probably find them on Amazon, frankly. Anyway, this texture spray is great. This is not a dry shampoo. This is to add a little bit of texture to your hair so it'll hold better if you're putting it up or putting it in a braid or um, if your hair tends to be really slippery and slick. This is going to take away some of that and sort of mat it out a little bit so it doesn't just slide out of updos or braids or ponytails. Um, so you, pro you could definitely spray this at your roots or you could just focus like mid shaft to ends just to add a little texture to the outer part of your hair. Um, it's great for building volume. I just like it. It's, it leaves a feeling on your hair so if you hate the feeling of product on your hair then you won't like this product or any product that's a volumizer likely. Um, that's an effective volumizer but this is great if you need to add a little oomph and it's also good for messing up like perfect curls if you want a little bit more of a beachy wave look and you get your hair curled and finished and it's like oh this is too curly. Spraying a little bit of this texture spray and sort of crinkling through your hair with your hands will mess it up and loosen it up a little bit without pulling all the curl out. I think like a wax spray would be too heavy if you wanted to soften curls, but this undone texture spray is the perfect amount of weight and texture without melting your hair completely. Okay, another product I want to mention is the Bumble and Bumble Dry Spun Finish. This is not it, but this is another Bumble product. I just wanted to have something to hold here because I felt dumb just talking about it. Um, this is the Bumble Thickening Full Form Mousse. Not particularly memorable right now. I don't know if I really like it or not. I haven't used it in a long time. 
the dry spun finish which is an aerosol spray similar to the amica undone texture spray is awesome for building volume you can use it at your roots you can use it mid shaft ends very very similar to the amica texture spray um and it will leave more residue on your hair in a good way than the amica one but it will it will give it such a glorious texture for doing like a monster messy bun or um, a textured braid or a fishtail or anything like that. So if you ever have issues of your hair falling out of things, you've got to try one of these texture sprays and be generous in how you apply it and you will see a big difference in how your hair responds to you dealing with it once you have a texture product in there. All right, I'm gonna dig into my bag. This is the cutest bag from Alyssa Jacobs. She's on Etsy. Um, I, I asked for a like gift card sized card holder from my sister for Christmas and I didn't get it. So I went on to Alyssa Jacobs Etsy shop and ordered it. And then in the time that I had placed the order, my sister texted me and was like, ah, I forgot one of your gifts. I'll put it in the mail. And sure enough, she had gotten me the Alyssa Jacobs card case in the exact same shade of fabric or um, type of fabric that I had just ordered for myself. So I was like, well, I'm gonna have two of the same card cases. And long story short, Alyssa touched base because I forgot to include my color choice. And I was like, well, listen to this funny story. I'm actually getting one from my sister. And she offered to swap it out for a zip pouch. So, and then she sends these little um, roses, these little felt roses as well. So anyway, I'm, I love it. And it was such a treat to get something different. I thought it was too late because I had already placed my order, but she's worth checking out if you like Etsy things. Nail polish um, treatment of the year, I guess, is the Julep Oxygen Nail Treatment. I loved putting this on my nails on the regular when they weren't polished um, because it, it, was, it gave it a nice finish and it didn't look like my nails were completely naked, um, but it also made them stronger. So it's not, I haven't found a nail treatment product that's like unbelievable, but this one is really good. So if I find one that changes the game, I will mention it to you because my nails are pretty weak. Um, but that was a favorite for the year. Um, I can't believe I haven't mentioned this yet because this was like, duh, this was the game changer. The Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in, what shade is this, Luminous Light. I loved using this. I haven't used it in a while because I had it in a different makeup compartment um, in my closet. And this is just the most beautiful highlight. It got huge this year and everyone was talking about it. And so I obviously had to get my hands on it. And there's been a couple other products by Hourglass that have come out that I'm like, hmm. Yes, I'm interested in that, but I'm really trying to like use what I have. Um, being a beauty blogger means I acquire a lot of things, so I'm trying to use it, and then it gets stashed away in my closet and sort of forgotten about for a minute. So I'm gonna put this back in my daily makeup bag. A foundation that I really loved using this year was the Tarte Amazonian Clay Full Coverage Airbrush Foundation, and I used, oh gosh, what is the name of the brush? I didn't grab it like a, a dense short kabuki brush with it to apply um, this is the best powder foundation for full coverage is it mineral no um, that I've ever used so if you like the look of full coverage but you don't like the feel of liquid foundation this will cover everything and feel like a light non-existent product on your skin so Definitely, definitely worth checking out if you're looking for something like that. I love wearing non-liquid foundation in the summertime. Maybe just a tinted moisturizer or something with a little bit of a tint in it. I haven't found a BB cream that I'm really in love with, but this is all I need in the summer for coverage. That's not going to melt away um, without feeling like, I have too much on my skin and it's a thousand degrees and 100% humidity and I just don't want to deal with it. Too many things on my face when it's really damp outside so this was my go-to over the summer not surprisingly my last products are lip products I have to mention the Dior lip addict lip glow Dior addict lip glow in coral oh this is like the perfect summer shade it's hydrating it gives a nice hot pink so there's the pink and then the coral version and they re-released the coral version this summer um, Awesome for summer and sort of a sheer, vibrant color, if that makes sense. Um, but I just love this. It was such a fun product discovery and it was so fun to, when they re released it, I was like, go get it! And people went and got it, so that was funny. Um, 
My two cutest lipsticks of all time are, this one's by Anthropology, this one's by Tarte. I know they look really similar, the packaging is almost identical, but they do different things. So this is the Tarte Amazonian Lip Butters. Butter Lipstick, not Lip Butters, Butter Lipstick. This shade is Angelic Nude. It's a really, really pretty nude color. Um, and it's pigmented without feeling like, ah, I put a ton of lipstick on. So I like that you get a lot of color and you also get a lot of shine and moisture from it. This shade is, I'm gonna just apply some right now. Ugh, I use this one constantly. This is from Anthropology. The packaging's like the same for these two. This shade is the Lips and Flowers um, shade. It's not written on the package. I don't know how that managed to happen. But anyway, it is a tinted moisturizing treatment. I think there's four other shades. All of them are pretty cool. And what I love about this is if you're having like a no makeup day or a super casual day, this gives your lips a little bit of color like you saw without feeling like, okay, well, I'm not really dressed up or wearing anything else, but my lips are on. You know, it just kind of is the perfect hint of color. I put a little effort into adding some life to my face without being overpowering. And how perfect. We're going to end with the final beauty product I put on my face every single night that I would be lost without. It is the Bite Agave Lip Mask. I think this shade is champagne or something. I didn't really pay attention when I was buying it because I thought there was only one shade. It's a little bit like a sheer pink. Um, this is this is the best overnight lip treatment. You can use it during the day. You don't have to use it at night. But I wake up and my lips are so soft and moisturized still and I've been looking for a product that would do this for so long and so I'm so happy to have found it. So this is a definite favorite of 2014 and I hope to never be without one of these and I think they came out with a new color recently so worth looking into if you're looking for a product like this. So those were my favorite products for 2014. If you want to see any others because I'm sure I forgot something that was like revolutionary game changer in like May that I just forgot to include in this annual video. You can watch my monthly beauty favorites videos. Um, those are on YouTube. You can also find them on my blog under the beauty section. Um, but I love trying new things and telling you guys what is worth investing in. Then every once in a while I'll come across a product that's fairly disappointing and mention that as well too, just as a warning. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in January with my January beauty favorites.